Hello, Bobby Torres of Fright Box recording here to show you how I dial in a fat and punchy snare drum sound using basic compression techniques. Now, if you have any experience mixing, you probably know by now that just simply taking your snare drum and slamming it with compression often isn't enough. You end up with a snare drum that sounds artificial and with too much attack and overly spiky, especially if you're dealing with program drums or drum samples. So in this mix here, I have a very, very basic drum mix of drums that I recorded out of my project studio. Um, I am blending in a snare drum sample, 50%, but the sample was taken from the actual kit itself. In other words, it wasn't from a sample library or there's no processing on the actual sample. It's a raw sample of the exact same snare drum sound, which you're soon gonna hear. I'm only using it for extra reinforcement. So what my goal was with this drum mix was to create a nice, again, punchy snare drum sound that sounded very analog. Uh, and again, I didn't want it poking through too much or sounding artificial. I wanted it to blend with the rest of the kit. And it all comes down to how I'm utilizing compression and dynamic range in this drum mix. So without any further ado, let's take a listen to the sample, and then I'm gonna dive deep and share with you my approach to using compression to dial in a fat and punchy snare drum sound. Let's check it out. So as you can hear, the snare drum sound has a lot of attack, but it's not poking through the mix in a strange way. It sounds very natural and like it's sitting in the room and alongside the rest of the kit as if it were one instrument, which it is. And also if you're interested in seeing exactly how I went about capturing this drum sound at the source, I'll leave a link below to a video that I uploaded a few weeks back where I share with you both my miking and tuning approach to achieving this drum sound. Again, at the source in a simple project studio, with very modest and inexpensive gear. So I'm gonna go through and bypass the compression on my snare drum, and I will talk to you about my approach and you will hear what each stage is doing to this snare sound as far as the compression is concerned. So let's take a listen to the raw snare top mic uh, with no compression on it at all. Let's take a listen to what that raw top mic is sounding like. So not too bad, it has a nice kind of dead sound to it, but with a lot of punch, and a lot of that comes from the drummer just hitting it nice and hard. Um, I have a little bit of EQ, just cleaning up the low end, all frequencies below 100 hertz, rolling out a little bit of lower mids to clear up the snare drum sound, and I just have an expander reducing the background bleed by 10 dB, nothing extreme. Now, before I even add compression to this snare drum sound, the thing I'm not liking about it, again, this was recorded through modest gear, uh, no high-end transformer-based uh, preamps or tube preamps, just a regular interface. The snare drum is very spiky and has no character as far as coloration or analog saturation. So right off the bat, I'm just using a basic tape saturator to kind of lop off that initial transient and slightly distort the snare before I add any compression to the sound at all. Let's listen to what this tape saturator is doing to my source snare top mic. Let's check it out. As you can hear, the snare sounds slightly warmer and less spiky. Now this might not be a big deal right now, but believe me, when I combine the rest of my snare tracks together and my overall drum mix together, it is gonna add up. So again, my goal here is to just lop off some transient just as if my snare drum were recorded through some analog gear. And most tape saturators will get the job done. So now let's talk about the compression and how much compression is taking place in my mindset with the compression that I'm adding. And all of my compression is taking place in this channel strip. So I will re-engage the compressor and then we'll talk about it. Let's check it out. So as you can hear, the compression that I'm adding 
after the tape saturator is kind of making the snare drum sound a little more punchy, but it's a warm kind of punch that I wouldn't be able to achieve without the tape saturator. And I'm going for very modest compression around three to six dB of compression, which again on a snare drum track is very modest, but don't worry when I mix in my snare sample, that's where the more heavy handed compression will take place. Um, slow attack, quick release, very low ratio. I'm just looking for punch. I'm not too worried about dynamic range control. My goal here is to achieve some extra snap out of the compressor to help make the snare drum sound a little more aggressive. Now, super simple. Let's take a listen to my snare sample track. Um, I'm gonna engage that exact same tape saturator with very similar settings. Let's listen to what the snare sample top mic sounds like. So as you can hear, pretty much sounds exactly like my live snare drum track because again, this sample was a sample I made myself of the raw snare sound where I took clean hits uh, before we started tracking the songs. And it's only being blended in for extra punch and consistency in the snare track. So the snare track sounds completely organic. I'm just using this sample for just a little bit of extra smack. And because of that, I'm using the exact same EQ or very similar EQ. I'm compressing this track a little more heavily because I can, because there's no cymbal bleed. Let's take a listen to what this compressor is doing to this particular snare drum track, the snare sample track. So as you can hear, it's reinforcing that original sound in a very pleasing and natural way. And again, I can get away with a little more compression because there's no cymbal bleed because it's a sample. And that alone is adding a lot of punch to my snare drum. Now, before we go on to the processing that's taking place beyond this, let's talk a little bit about the snare bottom mic. For me in this mix, the snare bottom is only used for the sizzle. So I'm not getting any punch out of the snare bottom track. Let's take a listen to the snare bottom track with the EQ I have going on and compression I have going on. So as you can hear, it's just a light sizzle in the background and that's intentional. I just wanna hear more verb from my snare bottom than anything else. Very light compression. Most of the low end and lower mids and even some of the 2K range is completely rolled off. I'm only using this track for its top end. So again, all the punch we're hearing in the mix is coming from the snare top mic and the snare sample, which is a sample of the snare top mic. So let's hear what the drum mix sounds like right now as it stands and then we'll move forward and see how I'm further processing my snare track. Okay, I'm really happy with that. The snare sounds nice and punchy, but here's the thing. I'm using very modest compression on both of my snare tracks, so I'm gonna blend in some parallel compression. Um, and in this case, I'm using more parallel compression on my snare top mics than any other track. I just have a little bit of kick drum going through my parallel bus and a little bit of toms, but the majority of the gain reduction is taking place from the snare drum triggering the compressor. So I'm gonna re-engage that track and let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place in my parallel compressor, and let's hear what it's doing to my snare sound. It's adding a lot more punch. Obviously, it's adding a little bit of volume because now we have more signal coming through in this parallel uh, bus. But we have an additional 12 dB of gain reduction, but again, it's in parallel with my main drum sound. So it's only being blended into taste for extra punch with my snare. Now, the question is, why am I doing this instead of just compressing my snare drum harder? And again, it's because it's not ruining the tone of the snare. If I were to smash my snare track to death, a lot of that tone would sound choked and would just make the drum sound overly squished and spiky and weird. And this parallel compression is working wonders because I get the best of both worlds. Now let's go to the very last stage in my drum mix here. I have that same tape saturator at the very last stage on my drum submix, which of course is affecting my snare drum sound. And what's great about this tape saturator is that it's lopping off transient yet again on my snare drum, as well as all of my other drums, and it's helping to glue the overall sound of my drum kit together. So this too is affecting my drums, and uh, I'm gonna bypass it 
and re-engage it as the drums play back and let's hear what it's doing. So as you can hear, it's really gluing my drums together and uh, making the snare sound a little more subdued and a little more tucked in the drum mix. And because of this, I have one last pro tip to share with you uh, that I sometimes do if I feel I want a little more smack out of my snare without adding any actual compression. Uh, because right now I'm really happy with the drum mix, I'm happy with the snare sound. Uh, but again, I want a little more attack in a way that's very transparent. And what I like to use in these situations is a transient control or a transient designer. And in this case, I'm using the Waves Trans X. And uh, what I'm doing is increasing the transient of the low end and the top end, but not the mid range. So in a sense, it kind of looks like a smiley face, but it's not the same thing as reducing lower mids because this is a dynamics control and it's just over accentuating, again, the attack in the low end and top end. So let's hear what it's doing to my snare drum as the drums play back. As you can hear, it's making my snare drum sound a little more clear, a little more attack in the top end, a little more fatness in the bottom end, and the mid-range is being left alone. And the way I'm achieving this uh, is both of my snare drums, my snare top mics, are being routed to a snare submix, and the snare submix is being routed to my drum submix. So again, it's just an easy way to add extra processing, subtle processing, to those two snare top mics, both the live top mic and the top mic sample. So as you can see, I'm achieving the snare sound that I want through a very nuanced approach. I'm not doing any one thing too heavily. It's little bits of compression added throughout the chain to achieve this analog fat snare drum sound that I'm really after. And again, these drums were recorded in a simple project studio, no acoustic treatment, no pro gear, just solid recording techniques and mixing techniques. So I'm curious to know, how do you mix your snare drum. Are you a fan of fatter snare sounds or more high pitched snare sounds? Do you like a snare drum that really pokes through the mix? Or do you want your snare to kind of live and gel with the rest of your drum sound, kind of like how drums sound in reality? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload more weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. If you're interested in some Fright Box swag, I've got t shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool things on the way. There's a link below to the Fretbox merch store in this video's description. And I want to let you know that you could download my Guitar Impulse Response Octopack for absolutely free. The IR pack comes with eight impulse responses, four microphones, two mic placements per microphone, two SM57s, two SM81s, two Sennheiser E609s, as well as two Electro Voice RE16s. If you're struggling with guitar tone and just want IRs that are good at the source with solid mic placement and you want a few different flavors to choose from, the IR pack is available to you for absolutely free. There's a link below in this video's description. And until next time, happy mixing.